Altogether, the gear weighs the same as 20 family cars and must be lifted into the belly of the plane in just 13 seconds. Getting the system operational has taken months of hard work, but now it looks as if they're finally making progress. The last few months um, have been very frustrating because we've had um, obviously a lot of uh, uh, technical difficulties with systems on the aircraft. We've had a lot of problems during testing, so we've all been working very, very, very hard in order to, to have all of our systems all working um, for first flight. <laughs> so that's system one, looking good. This is why we're here. Days like today is is uh, why you do this job, because it's very exciting to see the gears moving and you spend an awful lot of time making sure that the right parts are where they should be. And so <laughs> I've been waiting for this for months. <laughs> Their last hurdle is to simulate a worst-case scenario. Even if all power was lost during flight, the pilots must still be able to lower the wheels to land. In such an emergency, the gear should fall down under its own weight. But testing it is risky because the wheels will hit the doors as they drop and that could cause damage. So this is the, uh, the big test, yeah. The outer doors begin to open under their own weight. Any second now, the locks that hold the gear up will release. Immediately it's clear that something has gone wrong. Next, the massive six-wheeled main gears deploy. And after a delay of 16 seconds, the jammed outer wheels slip free. It's not a good result. We've, we've worked as hard, we've done the best we, we possibly can, and, and we are where we are at the moment. For me, it's something to get stuck into. <laughs> something to understand, something to uh, find a solution. The team suspect that the wheel might be sticking on a guide ramp, an aluminium plate where the wheel is supposed to push the door aside. Smearing it with grease should prove if this is quite literally the sticking point. The ramp does seem to be the problem. A permanent solution is needed, and fast. Finding answers to sticky problems is all part of the business. And over in Hamburg, Airbus have been straining to ensure another important system works perfectly. Laid out in this building is a full-size test rig of the waste system for the A380. With up to 20 toilets and around 900 metres of piping, it's a big job. Senel Myrtle and Dennis Kaiser have been hard at work for the last two years. We will give you a short demonstration of a toilet flush on the A380. So at first we have to evacuate the toilet system. I can start this, it will get a little, little bit loud. The toilets work by pumping air out of waste tanks in the rear of the plane, causing a partial vacuum. When the toilet is flushed, air is sucked in to fill the vacuum and the waste is drawn down the pipes into the tanks. In the finished aircraft, these parts are made of titanium to save weight, but here Perspex is used for clarity. This is Formula One technology for toilets. And the result is some seriously speedy sewage. The speed um, of the piping it's around 60 meters per second. 60 meters a second is about 130 miles an hour. 
such high performance plumbing is needed because of the size of the plane. At nearly 73 metres long, the loos at the front are a very long way from the tanks at the rear. This is the most forward toilet in the A380, the one what the pilots normally would use. It is quite difficult because you have, uh, you have a pressure loss from the waste tanks to this toilet because of the, of the length. It's a challenge not to be sniffed at, but undeterred the guys give it a go. Just seconds later, the waste arrives at the tank, and flushed with success, the engineers bring the A380 another step closer to reality. By March the 14th, 2005, the A380 is parked outside the factory here in France. The customers for this first plane are technically the test pilots who will fly it. But there's still a lot of work to be done before they will accept the machine. Head of the programme, Charles Champion, comes to take another look and discovers it's not all bad news. That's the most important part. The coffee machine for the flight test crew. If this doesn't work, they will never take the aircraft. Joking aside, it's clear that the plane is far from ready. The landing gear is just one of the things that need to be finished. Uh, we still have a lot to do. There is a lot of activity. So some of it is related to troubleshooting, and other related to uh, closing the area. But uh, we do have a lot of people uh, still working on the aircraft. The next day, the test pilots turn up for a photo shoot. The media are naturally interested in the six men who will fly the A380 for the first time. Although they pose happily for the cameras, it's clear where their real interest lies. For within minutes of the last shot being taken, they're in the plane checking out the new machine. For flight test director Fernando Alonso, it's important to feel comfortable at his post. This is the place where I will be sitting for the first flight and it'll be, uh, it'll be almost my home for the next uh, month ahead. Yeah. Surrounded by screens and readouts, Fernando will be able to monitor everything happening to the plane in real time. This screen, for example, it's what we call the flight list plane. So it shows us the uh, aircraft pitch attitude and bank angle. It shows us the speed, the angle of attack, the altitude, the heading. So just by having a, a glance at that screen, we have a very good overall picture um, of the airplane. The aircraft is equipped with sophisticated flight instrumentation, thousands of sensors that record every aspect of the plane's performance. Gathering this precious data is vital to the test flight program. If on the day of the first flight, the flight instrumentation does not work, we will not fly. So it's, uh, I think that, that sums it up, you know. Despite the seriousness of the task ahead, there's no doubt the A380 is beginning to generate a real buzz. It's really great to be here. We've been waiting for it so long and, uh, and now it's, uh, we're almost there. March the 30th, and the plane is in a hangar again for final tests on the electrics and hydraulics. The moving surfaces are working, but one safety critical system still remains unproven. Okay, cheers. Simon Sanders is back for a last ditch attempt to show the landing gear will deploy properly. His team hope they've come up with a solution to the problem with the sticking wheels. This is the ramp on the wing gear door where we put the grease last time. Now for a more robust solution, we've applied a, a layer of Teflon paint, which is similar to the, the Teflon, the coating that you have on uh, non-stick uh, frying pans. So this will reduce the friction when we do the free fall. We're going to now perform the test to demonstrate that with this low friction Teflon coating that we've, we've solved the problem. The man they have to convince is test flight engineer Gerard Dubois, 
who will be sitting in the cockpit during the critical first flight. If Jared is not happy, the first flight will be delayed. I want to be sure on this aircraft, before taking the aircraft in the flight test department, that the landing gear is working perfectly well. If it doesn't work, I will refuse the aircraft until the 